Children's fractures are easy to treat, right? Well, yes and no. Let's explain. Hello, I'm Gavin Spence, children's orthopaedic surgeon, originally from London, now working at Bajil Hospital for Advanced Surgery in Dubai. Welcome to this video, which is part of the children's orthopaedic series. I'm here every week discussing conditions that people find confusing or are just looking for more information about. If you have a suggestion for a topic you'd like us to include in this series, then please comment and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You'll find a link to all of our videos as well as loads more information on all these conditions on our website. There's a link in the description below. So children's fractures are common. About one in four children will get one at some point during their childhood. And I should probably explain that to an orthopedic surgeon, a fracture and a break mean exactly the same thing. We just mean a bone that has mechanically failed in some way. So children's fractures differ from adult fractures in three important ways. The first relates to their mechanical properties. So adults' bones are strong but brittle. Think of them as being like china, say. So if you load a piece of china, it will resist that load and nothing will change until you reach a critical point when it will suddenly fail and shatter. So that's how adult bones tends to break. Whereas children's bones, because they have different chemical properties, have different mechanical properties as well. They're more pliable. Engineers would say they are more plastic. And what that means is when they get loaded, they tend to warp and bend and distort. So that leads to fracture patterns which we only see in children, never in adults. So that's the first important difference. The second difference relates to the fact if you look at a child's x-ray, you'll see there are horizontal lines just where the joints are. And these represent specialised areas of cartilage called growth plates or physes. And their job is to make the limb grow longer. So they only appear in children, they disappear in adults. And these growth plates are relatively weak areas of the bone and they can also fracture. So if you go to the textbooks, you'll find there are whole chapters devoted to these growth plate or physeal fractures. They have a classification and a treatment protocol all of their own. So that's the second important difference. And actually, while we're talking about growing areas of the skeleton on x-rays, uh, one of the other problems is that sometimes because of these areas, quite significant children's injuries can look surprisingly innocent on x-rays. So there are pitfalls for us doctors there if you don't know what you're looking for. There's a number of injuries around the elbow that are notorious for that, in fact. So the third difference relates to the fact that we're talking here about a fracture in a skeleton which is growing. So as bones get bigger, they also tend to smooth out imperfections and bends and twists as they do so, a process called remodeling, which can be quite advanced, particularly in young children. So to us orthopedic surgeons, that's a big advantage, actually. Because if we know if nature can straighten out a bone for us, then we may be able to avoid an operation. But the downside of a fracture in a growing skeleton is, well, what happens if the fracture damages one of those growing areas that I was talking about earlier? If that happens, then the fracture tends to heal okay, but the problem becomes apparent later on, when the limb doesn't grow properly or starts to grow off at a funny angle. All of these problems can be treated, but it requires quite specialist intervention to do that. Fortunately, that scenario is actually quite rare. So the fact is, actually, most children's fractures are easy to treat. They heal up reliably in about half the time that adult fractures take to treat, and they can usually be treated with fairly simple methods. The trick, as with all these things, is to spot the exceptions to those rules and to take early action to make sure we don't end up with a problem in the future. So those are a few thoughts on children's fractures. That's all for this week. If you have any questions arising from topics raised in this video, then please put them in the comments. I'll respond as soon as I can. If you found the video helpful, please hit that like button, share it with anybody else you think might be interested, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll be back next week with another video in the children's orthopedic series. Taking kid stuff seriously.